Today we've got the Titleist U505 utility iron with us for an episode of the Swing Report. Thomas is joining me today to give his feedback on looks and feel, and we're going to do some testing as well and tell you everything you need to know. If you enjoy this episode of the Swing Report, make sure you drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the Second Swing YouTube channel. Also, for our final all-encompassing thoughts on the U505, skip to the end of the video in that final chapter, we'll tell you everything you need to know. Hey golfers, this is Drew Mahole from Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today, another new club to test out here, Thomas. The U505 Utility Iron from Titleist. Um, it looks beautiful, uh, and I'm sure it launches some rockets out there too. The U505, uh, and Titleist has kind of recently kind of really boosted their utility iron game a little bit. Um, when they, they launched the U500 and the U510 a couple of years ago, adding to it now with the U505. So um, Thomas, just want to get your perspective first on kind of initial impressions on what it looks like. Uh, also, it looks like we have a stock shaft in there too, so maybe tell us about that as well. Yeah, so first off, it looks like a betweener. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense since we've got U500 and U510 out. So mm -hmm. I believe that Titleist might be trying to combine it into one uh, driving iron out there and I think the T200 irons yep. that are coming out they're going to have a, a ability to have a driving iron with that particular set yeah. there too. So it's kind of in between her so it's not as small as say the U500 was and it's not as large as the U510 was so yeah. it's kind of right in between. Um, it looks like it's going to launch pretty high. Yeah. It looks like it's going to go pretty far and uh, talking about this golf shaft the hazardous RDX smokes the same golf shaft that they've had in their previous uh, mm -hmm. driving irons here. This is the 6.0 80 gram one today. Uh, this is what we've been sent initially. We'll do some future mm -hmm. testing here with some golf shafts that are a little bit heavier and stiffer sure. as well. But this will be fun. I'm excited. This, like I said, this looks like it's going to launch and go very far. Absolutely. Uh, and Titleist has not um, relaxed in terms of adding the technology and the R&D behind this. So to a few of these tech technology features in here, we've got you know Max Impact, which they introduced couple years ago in both the utilities and the T-Series irons. They've reconstructed it and they've also positioned some tungsten weighting in there kind of strategically heel and toe towards the bottom for a stable club head. The club face too is something I wanted to note. Forged high COR SUP10L face. It's a lot of terms there but essentially what that gives you unrivaled feel and then that really that kind of pop off the club face. So it's going to be probably a little bit loud uh, but it's going to be really fast, really explosive. Uh, and so I'm excited to watch you test because I know how you swing. I know how explosive your distance can be. And with utility iron, it should be fun. Well, what I want to do today is I want to test it off the tee and also off the ground. Okay. Because sometimes utilities, they're a little more towards just off the tee and as a driving iron. But it's also nice to have a utility that can mm -hmm. fly a little higher and maybe have a little stopping power with it too. So we'll test it out off the tee. We'll test it, test it out off the ground and see how it performs. All right, perfect. Let's get after it. All right, so Tom, it looks like you're starting off the tee here. Yep. Um, now, do you play utility iron in your bag, and how, if so, how does this compare to that looks-wise, just putting it down to the dress? Yeah, I do, actually. I actually play a three utility. This is what we're testing with. We've got the okay. three today. Um, it's, I took my three iron out of my bag a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I, it's, my hybrid's like my 15th club, so it's either utility or, or a hybrid. Okay. And 95% of the time, it's always utility. Okay. Yeah, so I just... Okay. I like the option to be able to hit one something out there, 250, 260 off the yeah. tee. And the mostly you're hitting course. this club off the tee more, more often than off the turf, right? Right, yeah. And this, I, I mean, because I then I have three wood and then to four iron, I have a large gap. So yeah. if I'm playing a course where I'm playing a par five, I'm trying to get home in two, that is around about that 250 for yeah. the second shot. Three wood's clearly too much. Four iron's clearly not enough. Yeah. And I would hit this one there too. Yeah, so. okay, perfect. All right. So U505 off the tee to start with, then we'll go off the turf, but um, it looks like a rocket launcher. Let's see how it launches. That looks like pretty solid. Yeah, I like that. I'm actually surprised at how, I did, it didn't seem like it was that loud actually. It wasn't that loud. No. A little higher, that was it pretty well too mm -hmm. though. Probably a touch more spin on that one just by looking at the flight. But yeah, how much spin were on those first two swings? You got about four thousand. Four thousand. Mm -hmm. All right, that's a decent amount of spin. That one was not hit very well. That was face open off the heel. We'll see how forgiving it is. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like your ball speed dropped a tad there. So yeah, that one went two thirty-seven. 
237. 237. Okay. So a little shorter. So yep. just a little bit. Had I mean that curve, you had 63 feet of curb to the right there too, which is I know not the shape you're looking for. So nope, that was a bad swing. Yeah, it's it's fairly high. Is one thing I'm kind of noticing mm -hmm. compared to my driving iron is a little bit lower. Sure. Now with my driving iron, I also play a steel golf shaft. Right, right. Well, I was is, just going to mention that, that that that's probably a big difference here too. That you're not fit for that shaft for a utility iron, um, so that's probably making a difference. You you play you know playing something heavier and a little bit lower launching probably than that. But still, it's, it is worth noting that this thing is flying pretty high in the air. Yep, very easy to hit in the air. Um, what was the furthest distance that I hit out of those four you had shots? Two uh, were 252 yards. One was 252.4. Okay. The other. 252.7 in total so yeah it felt like it was about a 250 yard shot but it just yeah. felt like it was just getting there by a little bit higher yeah. and i think it's something that's going to lower and, and chase out and of the utility irons out there this is a more you know the higher launching higher spinning version than something like you know what the t200 will provide in that two three iron space um or simply you know, i mean comparing it to like u500 for example this one also would be you know the higher launching it's going to get more spin out of it than that one. Yeah, I think it'd be closer to like U510 with yeah. regards to mm -hmm. that, that height and that, and that spin that you For get sure. out of it. Yeah. We hit one more? Sure. One more off the tee. That's a good ball. Yeah, that was a good swing. Yeah, still got some height to it. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I'm kind of noticing with this is height. So I'm curious to see off the ground now, knowing yeah. that it's just a slightly more I guess forgiving in the in the yeah. middle between maybe closer to five ten than five hundred, yeah. or the new T two hundred I should say. Yeah. Um, see how well I can hit off the ground. Sure. And I'll admit this has been the hardest shot for me this year. Is my longer irons off the ground have not been very good, so I could use a little forgiveness. A little lower on the face. More like that one miss hit that I hit earlier. Sure. A little further right. There we go. That one was hit really well. Yep. I was not leaving the face open again. <laughs> you turned that one over. Yep. Yeah, so I'm curious on that one to see how close it was to the other shots off the tee. So in terms of carry distance, probably it looks like about nine yards shorter. Nine yards shorter? Uh, the height was probably, well, I'm gonna just take a look at the table here. Um, so you hit that one just over 100 feet in the air. Okay. Uh, the other ones, I mean, you were, over 120 on all, well, all but one of them. And then you actually touch 140 on off the tee there too. So yep. off the ground, you can kind of fly it obviously a little bit better than, than off yep. the tee. Well, it's just harder because it's, well, a longer golf club yep. and there's not, there's not as much loft on it. So naturally that height is going to be a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. But 100 feet still, I'm very happy with that off the off the ground. Yeah. Especially the fact that I was kind of drawing that one a little bit yeah. there too. Well, and especially too, when you're hitting it off the ground like this and you're maybe, like you said, going after a par five, you do want that height so you can land it soft on the green. Right, yep. Stopping power is important. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's not as loud as I agree. I feel like it, it was going to be when I looked down at it. It, it looks like a club that's loud. Um, yeah. Just by the kind of the bulkiness of the, the size of the, the club head, but it, it really isn't that loud. It's, uh, so kudos to them for kind of engineering done because you look at a club like that in the past couple of years and you think just like a really loud blast of a noise almost yeah it's a good it's a good club like it's it's not quite as large as say the the 510 used to be all right so there's this will check the forgiveness out there's a little <laughs> bit of ground on that one so it might have maybe knocked the spin date right down a little bit so it might fly a little lower and chase mm -hmm. out a little more that's going to be a bit of a chaser. Yeah, that's so it's interesting. <laughs> so that spin went down quite a bit, actually, sub yep. 3,000. Well, I hit behind the bowl about you did. six yes. inches. Yes. Yep. Carried it actually 244, which is the longest carry distance <laughs> of the day. Total 267. Right. So, I mean, that's a little bit of like the gear effect, so to speak, in there. But, but I mean, that's forgiveness, too, you know? Yeah. And now the height was 87 feet, so it's not one like if you're trying to hit a pin in a long add a pin on a long you know, approach shot. Might not be as successful with that type of shot, but you got the distance out of it. Yeah, and this, I mean, you hit behind the ball six inches, it's not gonna, regardless of what club it's you hit, gonna it's not gonna, like gonna fly a, like you want. Yeah. Right, right. But the fact that it still kind of went pretty close to the same distance, it actually further, because I mean, the spin rate dramatically dropped. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. Yeah. 
and there's one low on the face. So that's the complete opposite. Okay, so you had kind of one a little bit fat. This one's a little bit yeah. thin. So this one should spin a little more. More than the last one for sure. Yeah, so that one, the spin actually jumped up to 4,600, but still got a 236.4 in total. Yeah. So you see some differences there, and that's to be expected with a longer club that's more difficult to hit consistently, but. Um, now, I wasn't intentionally mishitting those shots, but this is also a great test, too, for those people to see the forgiveness out of this club. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, that, that, what was it, the fourth shot there that was kind of the, the ch I don't want to say chunky because you hit it 267 yards of the three iron, but a yep. little bit fat, and it actually kind of took the spin off, and that's how these clubs are, you know, this, this U505 is going to do that. Um, if you do have it a little bit fat, it's going to take that spin off, and you're still going to get the distance that you need. So that was really cool to see that. Um, interesting little comparison here in terms of, you know, tee versus no tee, just for the sake of the comparison here. Yep. You actually hit, um, on average, off the, it was about a three yard difference in total. Uh, okay. In total, and about six yard difference in carry. I think so. one thing you brought up before, too, is four of the five shots off the tee yeah, were that's very true. consistent. Yes. Like they, they were. were within, like, kind of like a couple yards of each other. Yeah, so you're, I'm going to look at those right now. So the carry distances you had for off the tee, 240. 240.5, 242.6, So, and that's yeah. not too bad. You're within two yards, you know, uh, on carry distance when those off the tee ones. That really, that means that you hit solid. So. And then we won't talk about the one that left the place. No, we won't. On. We yeah. won't. We won't do that. But seriously, good performance here, though, from, I mean, both off the tee and then off the turf. This thing is forgiving. It launches, um, and it's pretty consistent across the board, too. Yeah, it's a uh, good-looking golf club. It's kind of surprising how solid it feels i feel like it was going to be feel like more hollow and louder but it it mm -hmm. it was a rocket mm -hmm. so thomas for as you know you know as explosive as it performed um and some of the takeaways there i think really the big takeaway for me is the sound um, how it was not as loud and abrasive as some other clubs that are that size um, have sounded in the past but after testing and after kind of, you know, knowing what you know now as a fitter, you know, kind of give us the key takeaways, the key objectives from this club and, uh, you know, what are the best benefits of it? I mean, it really looked like I talked about in between it in, in the beginning. It yeah. really does look kind of right between the U500 and the U510. Um, so it's, it's going to give players the best of both worlds. So yeah. it's going to fit into a wide range of golfers. Yeah. So you'll notice even when I was hitting these shots, I didn't hit it perfect every single time. I don't know anyone that's going to hit a three iron that's longer and doesn't have as much loft on it right. as well overall. So forgiveness is important. Mm -hmm. So it's going to fit a wide range of golfers from your better players all up to your little higher handicapped golfers there too, depending on their swing speed. So swing yeah. speed is important. So if you don't have enough swing speed, you might have a little harder time hitting this one, the three in the air, but possibly the four or five would be a yeah. good option to maybe possibly blend in there with like a Maybe T300, possibly. Yeah. That'd be an interesting concept. Yeah, yep. for sure. That'd be something that you guys will work on as fitters to kind of, you know, blend together some of these T-series with the utility 505 there as well. But Yeah, um, the gapping is going to be important. Making yeah. sure oh, that, sure. You, of course, that the, you get a good gap between each golf club. Yep, and then that's the discussion. Either it's, you know, a utility 505 or whether it's maybe TSI2 or TSI3 hybrids as yep. well that could work in there for golfers. But um, that's the, I mean, that's the key. They got to come in, get fit, work with someone like you, and then you can really identify what, you know, maybe you do need a U505, maybe you need a hybrid, maybe you need T200 for all we know. Uh, so uh, you can stop in a second swing, uh, schedule your fitting online at secondswing.com. We'll get you set up for a U505 utility iron if that's what you need in your bag. Um, and lastly, again, I'll ask uh, the golfers and the viewers out there to subscribe to our channel. Um, drop us a comment and a like on this as well. Let us know what you think about kind of our new format here for product reviews and the swing report. So. Uh, Thomas, thank you for joining today, giving your feedback and testing out the clubs, hitting some really good shots. Yep, this was fun. <laughs>